Westchester, and welcome to a brand new episode of Ram Center. I'm Amber Key, filling in for Cheyenne. Josh, how does it feel to be without your partner in crime this week? Cheyenne, I miss you. Please come back soon. <laughs> Amber is already getting on my nerves. Oh my gosh. Well, I miss you too, Cheyenne. But Josh, so how was your weekend? It was really good. You spent time with the family, saw my sister. Cool. Did you catch that Nova game? Yeah, did I? It, they were amazing. They were hitting every shot, and it was like a blowout win. It's the best. Game yeah, I've it was a blowout win, but like it was like not exciting to watch because like they beat them by so it much. It was exciting to see them win, but yeah. That's All right. It. Well, later this episode we'll talk more about March Madness, but until then, the Lady Rams softball team had a great weekend as they Stay swept safe. Kutztown University in a doubleheader this Saturday, with the first game score of two to one and a winning and winning the second game eight to zero. The Lady Rams were unstoppable and managed to dominate the entire game, looking to keep that momentum going for their away game today against Philadelphia University at 2.30 p.m. Good luck, ladies. Yes, ladies. Now switching over to the men's golf team, they ended up tying for second place in the first round of the Ogle Bay Resort Intercollegiate. This past Sunday, Westchester shot a 296 as a team, and Drew Patterson also tied second individually carding a two under par 69 in his two strokes back from the leader. So hopefully hopefully we can take the win and get first place. Yeah, and I Angels think so. Teams. They've been doing really well they this really, entire really season. Have. So let's keep up the wins. Let's go Westchester. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, the men's and women's tennis team both lost this weekend. The men's team lost to a tough one against Bloomsburg with a score of 7-2. to two. The Rams won both of their first and second singles, but got swept in the rest of the matches. It was the same story for our Lady Rams, too. They ended up taking the top two singles and one double, but ended up losing the rest of their matches to West Liberty. The Lady Rams host Shippensburg this Wednesday, and men's team look to redeem themselves against Caldwell College at home on Wednesday as well. That's all we have for Westchester Sports, so Josh, let's throw it over to you for this day in let's sports. Go. Welcome to our This Day in Sports segment. On This Day in Sports, Connecticut beat Butler in the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship in 2011, 53 to 41. Kimball Walker was the player of the game with 16 points and nine rebounds. On behalf of Ram Center, we'd like to congratulate Connecticut on this accomplishment. Hey guys, it's Amy with our top plays of the week. This past week, our women's softball team took on Holy Family here at Westchester University. You have Haley Bollinger running from left field to foul territory for the out. Michaela McSpadden has a right field hit for a double RBI to bring in Madison Kelly and Shannon Gray to put the Golden Rams ahead of Holy Family. The Lady Rams won both their games at the home non-conference doubleheader against Holy Family. The first game they won 3-2 and the second 2-0. Well, that's all I have for this week's top plays. Now let's throw it over to Erin with her interview with the women's softball coach. Hi, my name is Erin Brown, and I'm here today with the women's softball team. Head coach Diane Loki is entering her 13th season here at Westchester, coaching the school's softball team. She has single-handedly resurrected a softball program at Westchester that was a second division program. Um, I feel that all of our hard work has paid off, not just mine, but the coaching staff that I've had throughout the years and all the athletes that have come through the program, that finally all of our hard work has, in the last couple years, has really come together. In a recent game, the softball team split a non-league softball doubleheader with the University of the Sciences. They also ranked 18th in the country, entering the twin bill. The Sciences game was one of the first games this year that some things just didn't go our way. We've had so many things, like small things go our way in many games because we played 24. It was just one of those, the first game was just, we just kept hitting the ball hard to people and we left, we just didn't get the timely hit and they took advantage of our mistakes. So um, it, was a, it was our home opener. So the girls were a little, the team was a little deflated by it, but it doesn't define our season by any means. The softball team has recently won their game against Holy Family, but like any coach knows, it is always room for improvement. Um, anybody that knows me knows that <laughs> we continually try to um, work on things. Uh, we were very, um, in some of our games we didn't cover the bunt defensively, so we've been working on that. That'll be a correction. 
and then just trying to grow offensively every athlete trying to get better at bats and hitting the ball harder every time so that's just one thing we just need to you know, continue um, to improve on we only have two seniors so we do have a somewhat young team so just to continue to grow that's all I have for now now back to the studio hey Rams I'm Makaya Waller bringing you a brand new segment called Beyond the Locker Rooms. Here with us today in the studio, we have Abriana Noling, who plays singles and doubles on the women's tennis team. An interesting fact about Abriana is that she's been skiing since she was three years old. So Abriana, what year are you and where are you from? I'm a junior and I'm from Honesdale, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay, is that close to here? Um, it's about three hours away. <laughs> okay, not too far, not too far. <laughs> What is your biggest accomplishment in your athletic career at Westchester, and why would you say that's your biggest accomplishment? Um, last season in PSAC's East, I went undefeated in both singles and doubles, and our team went undefeated as well. So that was very exciting, and that seems to be continuing on this year. So I'm wow, really excited. That's, that's great. Yeah, it's super exciting. Yeah. So who would you consider your biggest inspiration, and why would you choose that person? Um, definitely my older sister, Amber. She has always shown me how you can strive for anything and achieve it. So it's always great to see that and see her succeed. Now, does she play tennis as well? No, she doesn't play tennis. She doesn't play tennis? No. She's just a great motivator for you? Yeah, in every aspect. Of yeah, that. understandable. <laughs> if you could be a superhero for a day, who would you be and why? Um, I would definitely be Superman. I think that would be fun to fly around for the day and help people. Yeah, that would be cool. I think I will be Superman too. <laughs> how do you celebrate after you win a tennis match? Um, just with lots of cheering and spending time with your team after. It's great to spend time after a big win. So you're like good with bonding with your teammates? Definitely. My team's great. I love them all. Yeah, that's a great quality to have within a team. Yeah. What is your guilty pleasure song? Um, basically any Disney song, really. I love Disney songs. Which ones do you like? Um, I love Frozen and Beauty Frozen. and the Beast. Yeah. yeah, Frozen is my favorite as well. <laughs> well, thank you, Abriana, so much for sharing a part of your life with Bram Center. Well, that's all I have for you today for Beyond the Locker Room. Again, I'm Makaya Waller, and make sure to stay tuned to Ram Center each week to see who we are next athlete we will get to know beyond the locker room. Stay Golden Rams. What's going on, Rams? On this week's segment of By the Numbers, I'll be giving you the rundown on one of the best players in the NBA, and his name is Russell Westbrook. Although his dominant season is sadly not gaining as much attention due to the Warriors chasing history, we can not deny that Westbrook is playing some of the best basketball we've ever seen. With that being said, let's take a look at some of the amazing stats that Westbrook has been putting up this season. Russell Westbrook is on a nightly basis triple threat waiting to happen as he combines tenacious play with a killer instinct as he flushes down his monster dunks. This season, Westbrook is currently averaging 24 points per game, 7 rebounds per game, and 10 assists per game. Westbrook has appeared in 440 games with 423 starts and averaged 20 points, 5 rebounds, and 7 assists, and 2 steals in about 34 minutes over his career. He currently leads the league in triple doubles in 16, and it seems like he can get one on any given night. Westbrook has proved time and time again to be one of the most elite point guards in the league, with his MVP-type MVP season is being compared to some of the greats as Oscar Robinson. Well, this is all the time I have for By the Numbers. And also stay tuned to watch Rams Turner every week for all your sports needs. We thank you for tuning in this week. Stay Golden Rams. Now let's throw it to Samara for a pro sports segment. Samara? This weekend, the NCAA tournament continued with Villanova dominating Oklahoma 95-51 to, to advance to the championship game for the first time since 1985. The 44-point win is the biggest margin of victory in Final Four history. The Wildcats were able to hold Buddy Heald, the winner of the Naismith Player of the Year trophy, to only nine points. Villanova coach Jay Wright was named the Naismith Coach of the Year. Later, UNC took down Syracuse 83-66. to The Tar Heels will face Villanova on Monday night, chasing their sixth title. Moving on to the women's NCAA tournament, UConn defeated Oregon State 80-51 to move on to the championship game for the fourth season in a row. Star Brianna Stewart ended with 16 points and Morgan Tuck had a game-high 21 points. UConn is on a 73-game win streak and went undefeated this season, winning every game by a double-digit margin. 
If UConn wins on Tuesday night, Coach Gino Oriema, a Westchester University alum, will have an 11th national championship, moving him past John Wooden for the most of all time. UConn will be taking on Syracuse, who will be appearing in the championship for the first time after defeating Washington 80-59. to Baseball is back and kicked off last night with a rematch of the 2015 World Series, featuring the Kansas City Royals and the New York Mets. The Royals started off strong, leading 4-0 after seven innings. The Mets were able to pull within one after a three-run eighth inning, but came up just short, stranding two men on base in the ninth, falling to the Royals 4-3. That's all I have for your March Madness and Pro Sports update. I'm Samara Rosenfeld. Amber and Josh, back to you. Thanks, Samara. So, Josh, did you see that Golden State versus Celtics game? I did, and it was crazy because Golden State's home streak, winning streak, got snapped by the Boston Celtics, and everybody was going crazy. I was going crazy. It was just a lot. Yeah. Damn. So the Golden State, they're up for breaking a record. Do you think they're going to the do that this season? The 96 Chicago Bulls. I think they can because with this loss, it's going to bring out a whole new animal, and they're just going to go crazy. And I think Steph Curry is really going to lead yeah. his team to that record. Yeah, I agree. But we shall see. Yeah. But let's talk about March Madness for a second. That is true. So we had you guys send in your brackets and decide who you think was going to win the March Madness tournament. And we have two winners of a $25 gift card to Barnaby's. And Ooh, we will talk Barnaby. about that later on in the week. But that's all I have for this week. I'm Amber Key filling in for Cheyenne. Cheyenne, please come back please. soon. Get better. And it's your boy, Josh Swift. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at WC Ram Center. And check out our new website, WCRamCenter.com. Have a great week, Golden Rams.